Animation is a medium that continues to grow and change every year. It's an art form that I've always had a fascination with. The characters and worlds and stories you can develop with it is astounding. But I think one of the aspects I haven't focused on is how unique to each individual artist it can be. So many parts of a piece are influenced by a creator's life, experiences, perspectives, preferences, and so on. And you can say that about practically every art form, but animation allows people to say what they want in any way they want to say it. It's unrestrictive, chaotic, and freeing. And the most concentrated place for these points is right here on this platform. Howdy, my name is Michael. Michael! But you could just call me Butter. And today I'm going to be talking about a bunch of animated thesis films here on YouTube. If you don't know what a thesis film is, it's a short film made as a massive project for film school, or more specifically in this case, animation school. I've always loved watching these whenever YouTube drip feeds me them, so over the years I've amassed a small catalog of gripping stories, gorgeous worlds, and fantastic characters that I finally want to give a full video to. And in fact, if this video goes smoothly, I may make this like an annual thing, we'll see. This video is also going to be experimental for me because I want to make this more of an experience for you. If you're here just to listen to me talk while you draw or work on comp sci homework, you can still do that, I'll make sure it makes sense. But if you have an hour to spare, in between each section I'm going to put a number on the screen and then in the description there will be a link next to that number that will take you to the short that I'm going to be talking about. There should also be a card that pops up in the upper right hand corner. Go watch the short and then come back using the back button on PC or the back button on the mobile browser overlay. I trust you know how to use YouTube. And then I'll give my feelings about it and if you feel passionate about it you can leave your opinions in the comments. I really want to try this because it would make it more of a meaningful experience for you and it would also give the original films more respect, I guess. It's probably going to shred the analytical side of this video, but uh, at the end of the day, I think this is more fun. All right, let's jump into these pieces. I wanted to start with this one because it doesn't really utilize the story structure that a lot of films in general follow. It's like looking into a window and seeing a glimpse of the world and its story. It breeds intrigue into what's going on. Starting out with all the quick pieces of world building, you know, showing a kingdom at war with mages and yet still using their magic to help support their agenda. There's your world in 20 seconds, and it's an extremely impressive thing to achieve. They show off the two characters in the story who hold up the focus, drowning everyone out and even going as far as to not give them actual lines because they don't need them. The dynamic between these two has enough heart to carry the whole piece. As the main character is trying to find her wand so she can run away from the kingdom she's disappointed in, the moment when she realizes the prince had it all along is so satisfying to see, especially when he gives it to her almost immediately. Visually, this short is stunning. From the simplistic, cartoony characters to the beautiful painted backgrounds, the choice of lighting in each scene is so deliberately different in a way that blends the whole piece together. You go from the almost sterile, heavenly lighting in the beginning, switching over to a modest glow from the hiding moonlight, the warm glow in the wand storage room, and finishing off in the dark of night, lit only by the stars in the sky. This specific shot gives me chills every time I see it. The world is very cool, to the point where I would love to run an RPG campaign in this kind of setting. A kingdom fighting mages with warplanes and soldiers is such a great contrast to what you find in typical fantasy. And on top of all that, the music is gorgeous. I think I love this one so much because it feels like a snapshot of a full story, or like the intro to a bigger movie. A bit of a jump from the last one, Best Friend tells a gritty dystopian story about technological innovation and how striving for perfection can lead to some serious issues. Even in the first few seconds, hiding the colorful cast of characters for a moment amplified the shock of Arthur's situation, of being addicted to these AI friends. Using eye drops as a physical and medical representation ties it further into what we know contributes to a lot of addictions, and of course you can see it in his eyes. He's stuck in this cycle of not wanting to be alone without his perfect friends. Ugh, and I get so creeped out by him pausing everything just to recharge. It takes away from the humanity of a simple conversation or gathering. The bright yellow visuals in contrast with all the grays and browns of the world around him really adds to the dystopian tone of it all. 
and the guy who ends up ripping his best friend out of his head, looking similar to him is just such a great parallel. The sound design as he makes his way out into the street just for it all to blend together into this smear of color, with the yellow tears welling up in his eyes provides this creative way to simulate anxiety that I haven't really seen done this way before. And of course, the obscuring shot where he reveals that he didn't learn his lesson and caved in to buy another best friend. It's chilling, and I think it sends a cautionary tale to the negative sides of AI and tech without some sort of regulation. I had to make sure this was a thesis film because I remember it just being some cool thing that an independent team created. I know plenty of people talked about The Legend of PP. I didn't know it was pronounced like that in my YouTube animation video, sorry. But I wanted to go more in depth on it. There's so much technical work going on in this one. It's got this interesting storybook intro and the expression work is fantastic. There's CG elements like the cat horse and the minotaur's head. And on top of that, just the 2D animation itself is fantastic. The story is this super comedic take on the brave knight that saves the princess trope that has definitely been done before. But in this one, the comedy is so witty and they get the timing down for the build up before the punchlines just right. And Pee Pee is such a scraggly little guy and his little pitter patter footsteps are so funny every fucking time. There's a bunch of great character designs in this and like I was getting at with the expression work, they complement each other very well. I love the plot twist of the dragon ending up with the crown on and Pee Pee going, Ah, I found the princess. I don't have a lot to say about it because a lot of it is jokes and it would be dumb for me to try to explain the jokes they made in the short. I feel like a lot of thesis films I've seen are very dramatic or, you know, heartfelt stories, but it's so fun to see a comedic piece given this much attention and quality. Overall, it's very cool and again, the animation is stellar. Speaking of heartfelt though, this one really focuses on this emotional coming of age story but from the perspective of a different character, which is cool, and that's a viewpoint I don't see many people use. It also allows this creative visualization of the story young Emil tells at the beginning. This sets up the story of a lonely child who became friends with a vampire named Charlie. When discussed with a sister from the local monastery, he recounts his life with him. As he ages, she discusses what this vampire means to him, trying to connect with him, believing it to be an imaginary friend or a symbol of his loneliness growing up. It's the gentleness of the sister that really ties this story together, her never trying to fight him about this matter. In the end, Emil says on graduation day that he was going to meet with Charlie, and it remaining unseen is so clever, keeping up this veil that covers up Charlie's true nature. We don't get to know if he's still a coping method for the difficult situations of his childhood, or if he's an actual vampire that helped Emil when he needed it. The choice of lighting is a subtle way to help guide the story of his character, starting brighter with more yellow tones making up the room, then softening to a less direct sunlight showing the change in attitude and then settling on the bright optimistic summer sun. It's beautiful and the story structure is so unique. I contemplated not talking about this one, but I feel like if I decided against it, it would go against the message of the piece. This was the most recent one I've seen, and it's also the newest one on the list, which is cool. I'm glad these are still getting the recognition they deserve. The concept of this one is struggling with... horns. No, it uses the anxiety and fears around sexual attraction to tell a very emotional story about acceptance and not feeling alone with your feelings. And they do the thing where they use animal characters and concepts to deepen the impact of a very human story. Animation is a great place to experiment with concepts like this because you can show alternative ways to talk about certain ideas and issues. A big trend I've seen in animation recently is a general visualization of anxiety and I'm so glad that it's getting more and more representation because it's reassuring that, just like in this short, you're not alone with your feelings. Also, the character designs are super varied, and there's a lot of different body types in this which a lot of films and shows relating to sex don't usually have. Certain choices that they make with the music track help shape the story, and the chaotic percussion that represents the horniness in the short is fantastic. Because while it may be wild and different from the calm backtrack that's playing, it's still music. 
I also love that his method of dealing with the stress of it fades over time, because sometimes you can't just take a deep breath and have everything turn out okay. Sometimes you need reassurance. I also love that the out-of-control growth of the main character's antlers isn't necessarily tied to his attraction, and more so likely tied to his guilt and shame of feeling that way. And this scene where his friends show him he's valid in his feelings and the big hug, ah, it's so cute. This one's great. I think a lot more people should make stuff like this, despite how crass it may seem. It's important. A story of a performing team struggling to cope with one member going missing right before a big show. It's so simple, yet so captivating. This one really stood out to me in two ways. The visuals are astounding. The color work with all the bright festival colors blending so well with the sunset lighting they chose for it is great. The character designs are distinct, and they really show their personalities. Which brings me to number two. The characters are so good. In this short, they took exactly four and a half minutes to set up five different characters and how they all treat the same situations. The last guy isn't showing up? Well, we've gotta find him. Ah, he'll show. Does no one care? He better be here. I can't do this. And they keep this up in both the writing and the animation. The argument scene they have right before their big performance is a great example of this with their expressions popping in and out of frame. But the reaction to the mystery character, Sasha, showing up in the last second is fantastic. I need to shout out the comment made by at uh, Eldronica, um, because they made me go back and really pay attention to the facial expressions in the entire film. I kept coming back to this one as one of the shorts to include in this video, and I think I made the right call. Studio Ghibli. Watch out. This little frog man's coming for ya. This one's just so pretty. It's animated in a similar style to a lot of old anime, and I adore it. Plus, this little guy is adorable. Chonky little dude with his tiny mustache and suspenders? It's fucking peak design. The world, on the other hand, is not quite as cute. It's eerie. The desolate land, the trash and decaying buildings, and most importantly, the drought that plagues the area is, I can't even find like the right word to describe it, gloomy, pessimistic. The story of Walter collecting any water he can find just to help cultivate a dying greenhouse up in an old lighthouse is dim, but the bloom he's able to create provides this magical visual that is very Ghibli. The lack of soundtrack isn't a common choice, but it really lets the sound design take a front seat. This one's a slow burn, but it is truly a lovely story that I adore. I just want to put Walter in my pocket and take him on a little walk to the park. He's so cute. This was another massive project that cropped up a couple years ago. And while it has been talked about many a time, I felt it would be unfair to not say anything about it in this. The story of revenge in this short is told in such a way that I find to be better than most. The tale of this cat lady trying to avenge her boyfriend to kill his killer is great, not because of the drama it sets up, but because of the fact that she never even makes it to him. The slow descent into madness that builds up as her desperation pushes her further and further past the point of no return. This, coupled with a lot of cleverly placed and transitioned flashbacks to when she fell in love with her boyfriend, really cements the downfall that grief has on her. To talk about the visuals, the environments are immaculate. Stunning in the past, haunting in the present. I have talked about lighting so many goddamn times in this video, but what they accomplished in this short is breathtaking. The fluorescent light pooling out of the gas station, the warm light of her home as she's dancing with her partner, the piercing glow of the fire chasing her through the forest. But nothing could ever prepare me for the shot. Her eyes looking back at her when she was expecting her husband's killer. The blood dripping down her face, and still the glow of the fire in the background a persistent reminder of what she's done. God damn! The music is so cool, too. The score starting mysterious, a jazzy post-war song kicks in to provide some texture, and the synth when she's running back to her car, oh my god. Fantastic. 
incredible. The people who made this should absolutely be proud of what they've done. So many little details to accompany this mastery in storytelling. It's... It's amazing. And that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you were able to take something away from it. Whether that be a new favorite short film, a new perspective on a story you love, or just a greater respect for these projects. Just from looking at some of the work in progress clips and posts, I know these are an absolute monster to make. But I hope the creators know that they are 100% worth it and should feel proud of their accomplishments. Let me know your thoughts on these pieces down below, and if you tried out the weird viewing experience, um, tell me how that went. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna go watch some more of these, so peace.